friends, welcome back to Gracefield Families. It's great to be with you today. Today we are talking about expecting the best. And, and speaking life. And speaking life yeah. over our families and over our children and over what's to come. So stick around and we'll chat it through together. Peace. Before we jump into our video today, I just want to remind you that at Gracefield Families, we empower you to live out your family values and kingdom purpose, steering clear of this world's distractions. So to empower you, we actually have a five-day family insight guide on our website, www.gracefieldfamilies.com, which is completely free. Uh, and it is a resource to help you understand your family better and give you purpose and goals for the future while resisting the busyness of our world. Yeah, so head on over and we look forward to helping your family to thrive. All right, everyone, one of our absolute favorite topics in life. It's about mindset, it's about setting yourself up well, and it's about expecting the best and speaking life mm. into situations. Mm. Uh, you know, there's often times where you're working up towards going somewhere or doing something and uh, our thoughts go to the negative and yeah. it doesn't really help, yeah. does it? No, it's really easy to actually um, kind of expect the worst, really, yeah. isn't it? Um, Absolutely. Rather than expecting the best, so often we can think of all the things that could go wrong, which isn't necessarily bad in some instances because you do need to do your pros and cons sometimes. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, it's really quick and easy for us to go straight to the negative. But today we actually want to help to um, encourage you to flip that and to instead of expecting the worst or the what's going to the bad things that are going to happen, expect the best. Absolutely. And change that. And it really does change the outcome. The outcome, absolutely. And in Proverbs 18.21, it says that tongue has a power mm -hmm. of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruits. And that means the fruits of life that you will eat when you speak positively, when you use your tongue mm -hmm. to build up rather than tear down. And when we talk about tongue, it can be our thoughts, it can be the words that we say. Yeah. It's all the things that we tell ourselves or tell others about what's going on or what we're going to do. Um, so I can be mean to myself and say, oh, I suck at that. So therefore, next time I do that, I'm going to suck at that as well. And next time I probably will suck because that's my <laughs> mindset, right? But if I say, I'm not yet good at that, okay, but next time I'm going to get better, you know what will probably happen? You'll I'll probably, probably get, get better. better. Yes, yeah, well absolutely. Done. So if, if we expect the best, mm. uh, we will often get the best. Or even if it's not the best, uh, we will see the positive in it and grow from it and move forward, won't yeah, we? Yeah, absolutely. And today we actually want to talk about three different ways we actually see this happening in life. Yeah. Um, and so the first one today is um, people are often either expecting things to be bad or hoping things will get better. Now, encouragement from us today is to actually change this because whilst it's not bad to hope things will get better because we all hope things get better in life instead of hoping it's a bit wishy-washy isn't yeah. it yeah and it's instead, like you're leaving it up to leaving, chance leaving it up yeah. to chance but what we encourage you to do today is to expect that things are going to get better because expectation leads to being proactive and so therefore you are more productive yeah so if you want things to get better you actually need to put things in place and that's yeah. part of the expectation is putting things in place in order for those things to get better, to take chances. Yeah. 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 So we want to be expecting things are going to be good or expecting things are going to get better rather than hoping they will or expecting things to be bad. For example, putting little things in place, if getting out of the house with your kids is always a chore and you're always yelling and you're always angry and yep. rah, 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 and you're just like, oh, I hope this gets better one day. All right, I tell you what, not much will change. But an expectation brings about it some action, mm. all right? So if you find a place for your kids to put their shoes, so they know where to go to get those yeah. shoes. Uh, if you have their school bags packed the night before, that's a new strategy maybe. These little things will get them out of the house uh, quicker. Maybe you put a chart up to, to take them through the steps that they need to each morning yeah. in order to get out of the house. That way you can expect it to get better because mm. you've actually put things in place yeah. which increase your expectation. Yeah, and it's about putting measures in place, isn't it, to bring success. Because Absolutely. we actually need to help our children to get to that as well. As parents, it's our job to train our children to go from little people to big, to big people. people. And that only happens through our 
modeling that to them. And so this is actually a way that you can model to your kids um, how to do that and how to, as a team, we are all about being um, a team. Um, as a team, you can work together to make things better. Yeah, that's awesome. So number one, expect things to get better because expectation leads to uh, outcome. <laughs> outcome. No, it leads to systems. It leads to productivity. It mm. leads to proactivity um, and actually putting things in place because you know that things will get better. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. So number two is what we say or expect to happen will directly impact our children yeah. and our children's expectations on things. Yeah. So like if we are going somewhere and we're a bit nervous about how it's going to go, we might have a private chat about that. All right. We're going to this person's house. I'm not sure how uh, it'll go with the kids because they're very precious about their house and our kids like to play. Um, not that our kids are destructive by any means, mm. but we might talk about those nervous things with us. And then what we'll do is we'll actually go to our kids and we'll say, hey, when we go to someone's house, how do we behave? Mm. What are the things that we do? Okay, we don't jump on couches. All right, we don't play with balls inside, which we've got a massive house and it's, you know, we allow that. So we have to constantly be telling them uh, balls outside. Not everyone has as big a house as us. They can do that. You know, like the other, uh, last year, I reckon, a, a long time ago, we were at Monash with some friends. Yeah, right? this was a huge time. And, and this, we, we stuffed up this day. We needed God's grace this day. Um, all of us as adults were talking about how oh, it used to be so much better. For those of you who don't know, Monash is an adventure playground out in the Riverland. Massive, awesome playground, yeah, so right? It's still awesome. When we were kids, it was awesome, but at another level of danger, right? Like, so kids <laughs> used to true, get yeah. seriously hurt. Yeah. And so um, it added more fun because you were risking your life with the things, but <laughs> people actually ended up in wheelchairs because of it. And yeah, so yeah. what they, over time, they've, They've dumbed down the playground. Um, it's still wicked fun. It's still an awesome playground, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not the level of danger it used to be. And so we're all standing around as adults going, oh, this isn't as good as it used to be. Oh, I wish it was as fun as it used to be. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah. And then our kids, all of our kids started trashing. Who had never been had there. Had never been there before. Started like trashing the playground, didn't they? Like trash oh, talking. Yeah, it. That part of yeah. the playground sucks. Or, yeah, it would be heaps better if it was like this. Our attitudes, yeah. our reminiscing of the past gave our kids an attitude that this place was no good even though it's still an amazing playground yeah yeah still an adventure playground it was super cool but it just really I guess highlighted to us didn't it that the way that we talk about things with our kids or the way we expect what are we if what we talk about what we're going to expect and our attitudes directly impact how our kids are going to have as their attitudes, their expectations, and their thoughts on that too. Yeah. So if we want to expect the best from our kids, we need to be talking things up. Now, we don't want to lie, no. all right? Lying is no good. Um, but it's okay to to set our kids up for things, even if they look like they're not going to be that great, Yeah. Um, like camping in the rain, for example. <laughs> set them up with a positive attitude and expectation of how yeah. they're going to do it. Because our attitudes affect our kids. Yeah. 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 Really important. Yeah. And lastly... Um, awesome. This is really important. What we expect of our kids or what we speak over our kids mm. uh, is what we'll end up looking for and actually getting from them. You mm. know, like um, we once had someone say to us, oh, your child's playing up because you went away for a night. You know, like, so they're, they're paying you back um, for that. And it's like, oh, hang on. That's not true. Like that's, that's, I, I choose not to see that my kid is purposely going out of their way to make me upset because I've spent time with my wife. Um, they're probably just hungry, <laughs> you know, yeah. they're probably just needing a sleep mm. or something along those lines. I don't know if I've art articulated that well, but do you want to try? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess too, like um, the expectation, for example, you might be going to a show, for example, and I'm. Um, you know, I could, if I was going to a show, I would be like, oh, I'm not sure about taking Eliana. She's going to be so loud and she's going to be so um, chaotic and she won't sit still and all this stuff. But then if I actually end up taking her, the things I'm going to be looking for are her to be loud, her to not sit still um, and her to be distracting. And so the way that I am speaking about it and if I don't speak life over the situation, then I'm going to be expecting those negative behaviours from her. Even if I don't mean to, subconsciously, they're the things that I look for. So if I'm actually 
speaking life over her and saying, oh, she'll be fine. She knows how to sit still and if need be, I can take her out. But I, if I have a plan in place and I can speak life, she's going to be great. She's going to enjoy it. It's actually going to change the way I actually view her during the show. So firstly, you articulated that way better than I did <laughs> with my example. So listen to her. Don't <laughs> rewind to me. Uh, secondly, part of that is actually adjusting your expectations. Yeah. Um, so recently we did take Eliana to the school musical and Isaac and Jeremiah were, were doing their dancey, singy things in that. It was awesome. Yeah, it's cool performance. Performance. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, and I just said from the start of the night, I said to Nicole, you know what? I'm happy to spend the whole night at the back with Eliana if that's what it takes to get through to sing and to enjoy the sing. And that's ended, you know, that's what I ended up doing. Um, we had to adjust. Our, we're not going to be able to sit there at a performance and have a quiet, perfect night with a <laughs> one-year-old. That's not possible. So part of that is adjusting your expectations, yep. knowing your kids. But no, I still enjoyed the performance. I still enjoyed the night. Eliana got to walk back and forth. I got to chase her. Um, people were blessed by her smile and her laugh and she actually fell asleep at one point down the back of people. Were but I like, think the point was... Oh, the point. Sorry. <laughs> I think the point was that we actually didn't then feel frustrated at her. Yes. Because we had spoken life over it that this is what, um, you know, she's able to do at one. And she did that for a, for a little while. She did yeah, this deal with that. <laughs> and then we had a plan ready to go. And so because we're able to speak life into the situation, instead of looking for the negative, we had a plan ready to go. It made it heaps better yeah. it? and the outcome was good. Yeah, I'm glad you jumped in there because <laughs> everyone would have got 20 minutes of my waffle. I must be tired or something because <laughs> I'm stuffing this up. Anyway, so what are the key takeaways from this video? What are they? <laughs> Firstly, um, when you have expectations versus wishy-washy hopes, uh, you are able to put incremental changes. You're laughing at me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> little changes, small things in place mm. that will help you to achieve your desired outcome with your kids. All right. Yep. You'll put in little changes, changing your mindset. Little things will happen. Your expectations are able to be there because you've set your family up for success. Yeah. Secondly, um, into watching our attitudes and expect the best with our attitudes because that will directly um, impact our kids. Be positive the way that we express things with our kids um, and speaking life over um, those situations and will really benefit our children and teach our children how to live in a positive way as well. And adjust your expectations. Mm. Um, I know that kids don't make the things you used to enjoy as easy, right? That's just kids. Um, and so adjusting your expectations of things uh, is super important because then you'll have a good time regardless. Yeah. And yeah. I guess the final one is to speak life over your children, over your family, um, and over the events that are coming up and that you're going to as a family because speaking life over them, um, the power of life and death is in the tongue. So yeah, that's true. Um, let's be speaking life. So I hope that brings um, just a different perspective maybe for yeah. you um, this week. But our prayer is that you expect the best for your family um, and you'll be speaking life over yourself, your um, your marriage, your children, and um, your life. And so I um, really pray that this can really help you this week. Um, and what specific things can you put in place this week to make it happen? What changes do you need to make or what do you need to and where do you might need to change your mindset and speak life this week? And one of those might be to head over to our website and grab our Family Insight Guide. And that'll give you a whole bunch of uh, helpful tips and hints for you to understand your family better <laughs> and to grow as a family team. Absolutely. So, peace out and um, happy speaking life this week. Bye. Bye.